What is up, everyone? It is your man on fire mentor, David Mailer, and I'm coming to you live from California, the Pacific Palisades. For those of you that don't know where the hell that is, it's somewhere near Santa Monica, and it's just below Malibu. Beautiful area. Kind of feels like the Amalfi Coast. Anyway, I know a bunch of you are joining me today because you want to learn how do you turn things around in your life. And I applaud you if this is you. If you're the person that wants to start turning things around in your life, good for you. So the first thing for you to be aware of, it's important that you even have that desire or you have that hunger to want to do so. So I acknowledge your courage to want to turn things around because it all begins with your willingness to take honest inventory of your life and truly wanting to turn things around. And as I've learned from one of my teachers in the past, without the hunger, you won't do it. So you have to have that insatiable appetite, you have to have that unquenchable thirst, and you have to truly have the hunger. Because what separates those from the have and have not, and what bridges that gap is you must have hunger. Secondly, you have to come to the admission that your life needs to be turned around. You have to be willing to admit that you're even in pain as opposed to burying your head and pretending that the problem's not there and just being dishonest with yourself. So you don't want to downsize where things are currently at. You want to get with the reality of where things are at and be super honest and forthright with yourself. And another thing is you're going to ultimately need to have emotional leverage in order to turn your life around because Thoughts as just thoughts are not going to get it done. Thoughts without emotions stay as thoughts. So you'll have thoughts like, I should go to the gym starting tomorrow. I should start eating healthier starting tomorrow. I should just start turning things around starting tomorrow. And the truth is, you won't if you don't have access and connection to the emotions because you'll need the emotional leverage because emotion, as we know, is energy in motion and emotion in its fundamental purpose is to have leverage for change and to help you adapt to an ever-changing world that's all around you and we know now more than ever we need to have a lot of emotions we need to have a stronger and healthy immune system so we can better adapt and thrive in an ever-changing world so it's imperative that we have emotional leverage in order to make change because the thought alone is not getting it done. You guys know this. You watch a Rocky movie, and next thing you know, you drop to the floor and you start doing push-ups, and you say, starting tomorrow, I'm going to hit the gym. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to start eating healthier. I'm setting my alarm clock for 5 o'clock, and boom, your alarm clock goes off, and you guys know exactly what happens. The pirates in the mind take over. You've lost the emotional leverage because you just got up, and without the emotions and without the hunger, your thoughts are staying thoughts and they're going nowhere fast. So that's exactly what we teach in our Man on Fire Brotherhood. We teach men how to gain access to their emotions, how to regain that leverage, how to regain that hunger, how to regain that fire so that you can start turning your thoughts into action. And you're going to have to learn how to do that and how to get that emotional leverage. Also, it's important that you surround yourself with a peer group that wants to better themselves, right? We've all heard you become a sum total of those that you hang out with, whether it's your income level, whether it's your health, whether it's where you're at with your relationships, you become a total, a sum total of those that you're constantly surrounding yourself with. So the question is, who are you surrounding yourself with? Who is the group that you're hanging out with? Is this a group that wants to better themselves? Is this a group that wants to live into their true potential? and turn their life around and live into the standard that's been set forth by their soul as opposed to staying in this hypnotic state that we've spoken about on many of my videos, that hypnotic state of mediocrity, that hypnotic state of blandness, of ordinary, of average, where the best of the worst meet the worst of the best. We were not born as men to be average. We were not born for ordinary. We were not born for good. We were born for great. We were born for outstanding. We were born for extraordinary and we were born for phenomenal. And if you forgot, then it's time for you to up-level your peer group and hang out with a group that is going to be a constant reminder and not sell you short on the greatness and then the bigness of who you are as a man. And you'll have to be in a peer group that will challenge you, that will stretch you, 
and it will push you to live your life at a higher level and at a higher standard than the one that you've been currently doing it at. So that is exactly how you start turning your life around. For those of you that are tuning in late, it's simple. You must surround yourself in a peer group that won't tolerate you living below the contract of who you were born to be. Most of us try to get it done alone. Most of us will put our head down and go to work. We disappear into the cave. We disappear into the dungeon and we say, I'll come out when I got it figured out. Yeah, well, you'll have it figured out, but the time will be in your 60s or 70s. And you'll have wasted the most precious commodity of your life, which is called time because lost time is never found. So not only do you have to have a hunger, not only do you have to have access to your emotions, not only do you need to learn how to actually access your emotions and use them as leverage and fuel for change and transformation, but the key is to be supported by a peer group that will stretch, push, and challenge you and hold you to the fire of exactly your soul's standard for who you came here to be as a man in this world. So I applaud those of you that want to turn things around in your life. And it starts with that honest admission. It starts with you being sincere and genuine about where things are at. It also has to do with you being able to paint a vision for where you really want to head. Most men never have a vision for their life. Most men, if, when I ask them, what do you want? It's like a deer in the headlights. Well, I, I, I want a better job or, or I, I want to make more money. That's not a vision. That is not a vision. That is a dream. And a dream won't become a reality until you make it a vision. And a vision won't become real until you envision it, meaning you actually can see what it looks like. You can describe it to a T. And that won't come true unless you actually have emotional leverage to do something about it. And that won't do come true unless you have people supporting you, challenging you, and pushing you, and holding you accountable. And all of that also has to be put on a calendar because nothing's real until it's in writing. Nothing's real until you've structured it and actually laid it out in a calendar. Like the first ever event I did seven years ago never could have taken place if I didn't actually schedule it. So it never becomes real until you schedule it. So there's so many things for you guys to consider in how you start turning your life around. And the number one thing is to surround yourself in a peer group that's living at a standard higher than where you've been operating at. Be honest where you're at. Be humble enough to ask for help. Get support. Be challenged. Be held accountable. And watch how quickly you start turning things around in your life. And another thing is don't believe the thoughts in your head. Don't believe the pirates. Don't let them take over your ship. It's your ship. You take it to the island called I Love My Life. How do you do that? You plot the coordinates. A captain without coordinates is screwed. So you have to have the coordinates of your life of where you're headed or you end up on Skull Island or the island called How the Hell Did I Get Here? Because a man must know where he's headed. And even knowing where you're headed, you must be held accountable, you must be challenged, and you must be supported. All right, let's move into some of the questions that were submitted this week and I'll get right to them. First question was, I lost myself after not being able to give my wife a second child. I gained a lot of weight and intimacy dropped off because of impotency. We haven't had sex in three years. I miss her. When she mentioned divorce, I got back in the gym and lost the weight. My body is functioning again. I want to be with her and I'm working on myself. I'm trying, but she just keeps pushing me away. She sent out the separation papers. She's cold, distant, turned off, and angry. She's not attracted to me and says a lot of hurtful things. I just want my family back and to reignite the passion in our relationship. I want to improve and change now. How do I do that if she won't give me the opportunity? All right, beautiful question, very honest, very uh, vulnerable and raw, and I applaud you and acknowledge you for um, allowing yourself to be visible to all of us. So here's my suggestion. And this is a common theme that you'll hear me sharing all the time in the videos that I do, in the lives that I do when I'm supporting men. And it's this, that men that say, how do I get her back, are missing the mark. You can't have her back or anybody for that matter until you get yourself back. And you want to get to a point in your own emotional and mental and spiritual development as a man where you don't have cords of dependency. You don't have neediness. You can have needs but not neediness. And you have to be willing to grow yourself as a man to the point where 
I don't have a neediness of having her back in my life and I've cut the cords of codependency where the strings were intertwined, where now my value and how I see myself as a man is intertwined in things that are external to me and in this case it's a woman. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have the deep desire and the hunger to want her back in your life, but to want her back and to have neediness to have her back are two different worlds. And for most men that say, how do I get her back? There's usually some form of desperation attached. There's some form of neediness. And for that man, what must happen is you must take on the courageous journey of growing yourself as a man. Why? Because women want to be with men that are growing themselves. They want to be with men that recognize their true potential and have the courage to stand in the fullness of that potential, have the courage to stand in their masculine leadership, have the courage to be unwavering and imperturbable and not take things personally in life and say to life, bring it on because I can take it. That's what they want. Now, we have so many men that have come into our brotherhood, into our community. I don't mean like our free Facebook group and things of this nature. I mean into our brotherhood where they worked on themselves and worked on themselves and worked on themselves and they had no communication with the lady that left them, whether it was their fiance, whether it was their wife, whether it was their girlfriend, no texting, no email, no phone calls. How the hell am I supposed to get her back if she won't even communicate with me? Some of you are wondering. Because women are so highly intuitive and highly sensitized to feeling what's happening around them that they can sense when we as men are changing and growing. And they will feel it in the field, like a dolphin has its sonar and a bat has its radar and cats and dogs can hear things and see things that we can't see. Women are the same. They are so intuitively sensitized that they will feel your change. And if your change is sincere, if it's genuine, it's first and foremost for you because you want to honor the soul's contract of who you were born to be and who God intended you to be. And you want to honor that relationship with your creator. I promise you that she will know. That's one thing you could do. And that's a must. The other thing is it's important that in your relationships, gentlemen, that if you don't have it where you want it to be and you don't have the intimacy and you don't have the trust and you don't have the communication, you must realize that there is a lot from the past that still needs to be cleaned up with your partner. And a woman will hold on to the micro and macro betrayals until you have cleaned them up fully. And I don't mean by some superficial apology where you now feel unburdened. I mean where you've gotten the depth of the impact of how you were in the relationship and you're willing to take full ownership and responsibility for where you hurt them or where you drop standard. Now please understand for those of you that are new that are hearing my videos, and you're thinking to yourself, oh, David, what about her? Doesn't she have to take some of the blame? Doesn't she have to take some of the fault? Please understand, this is not about blame. This is not about fault. When we're talking about blame and fault, we're, we're operating at a very low frequency. We're, we're in our wound and we're not in the gift and fullness of who we are as men. This is about conscious ownership and responsibility. And for those of you that are busting your butt in relationships, you're giving your all, you're all in, and you're bringing everything to the table, and you can tell in your soul and in your heart that the relationship doesn't honor you, great, move on. Move on with dignity, move on with respect, move on with grace, move on with love in your heart. This is not about blame, this is not about fault, this is not about why doesn't she take some of the blame and responsibility, it's not about that. It's a higher energy. It's about ownership and conscious responsibility for recognizing where you've hurt your partner. Where have you hurt your wife, your girlfriend, your fiance? Where have you hurt her? And have you truly gotten the impact of that hurt? <coughs> Excuse me. And have you cleaned it up? Have you really helped her feel that you get it? And can you speak into existence and go back into those betrayals and let her know how sorry you are and let her know if I could do it all over again, here's how I would have handled it where she can feel you communicating from your heart, not your head. And again, you're not saying it so to, to free yourself and you're not making it about you. You're not doing it to unburden you. You're doing it to unburden her. You're honoring her soul and letting her know you recognize where you sold her short. And if you could hold that depth of emotional presence and maturity and mastery and masculine leadership, I promise you many of your relationships will start to turn around. Problem is most of you haven't learned to be that man. 
and I, I don't say this to poke at you, this was me up until 41, where my life had to completely fall apart until I started reaching out for help, until I started getting mentors and guides in my life that were supporting me to rise into my fullness, into my greatness, into living the life that was designed by my soul and my creator. And that's what the Man on Fire community is all about. It's about standing for another man to live into the fullness of who God intended him to be, having more passion, more power, and more purpose, being on fire in that way in your life. All right, let's move on to another question that has been submitted. Let's move on to another question here that's been submitted. And this would be, I put my ring back on as a sign to stay strong on my path of reconciliation with my marriage. My wife said she isn't putting hers back on. I told her I didn't expect her to. Since the separation was brought up, she has been seeing someone. But on Monday, we were FaceTiming and she had a ring on. My heart skipped a beat. Our conversation was going really well and towards the end, I asked if that was in fact her ring. She said yes, but that she didn't want to talk about it. She has had her ring on every day since, but it is still keeping, but it's still keeping her distance. I'm having trouble understanding any advice or opinions. All right, well thank you for submitting this question. And just so you guys know that might be new to tuning into some of my videos, I'm not really here to offer advice. I'm not really here to offer opinions. I will I will give you guys some perspective to consider. Most of what I share is more generalized. It's not any games that we play here at Man of Fire. There's no trickery. There's no say this, then say this, then say this. It doesn't matter if I gave you the perfect languaging, right? Most men will say to me, oh man, I wish I could articulate the way that you do. Uh, it, it's perfectly poetic. And if I could just nail what you're saying, no, it's not about what I'm saying. It's about the congruence behind your words. It's about your energy. It's about your authenticity. And a man on fire, we're not here to play games. We're here to help you stand in the authenticity of who you are, in the congruence of who you are, in the most coherent and aligned version of you where you're living from your heart and you take ownership of who you are. You're, you're deeply and firmly rooted in the earth. You're owning your power. You're honoring your intuitive knowing. You're living from your heart and you have a beautiful relationship with your creator. This is what it's all about, being a man on fire. That's when you'll have more passion, power, and purpose in your life. So again, for the new guys, there is no magical thing I could tell you to say because your words energetically and vibrationally must match what's coming out of your mouth. And if it if, if it doesn't, then you'll someone you know she'll likely say to you, ah, you just read that in a book, or what? What did you hear that off of some video? And yeah, the answer is yeah, because she can't feel you. So I'm not here to to, to give you advice. I'm here to help enlighten you guys on certain life experiences that I've gone through, share my personal journey, and you can use your own filter, your own spaghetti strainer. Let's stick what resonates for you, and whatever doesn't resonate for you, great, let it pass through because you're the one that's going to have to have this experience. I'm just here to share what's worked for me and the thousands upon thousands of men that I've worked with. All right, so for this gentleman, um, what it sounds like, and, and you know, good for you to really want to go all in again on your marriage and, and reclaim your wife and, and see if there's a way to reignite the spark. So let's be aware that, you know, there's probably been a history of betrayal here, right? Like if I could speak to you guys each, I would be asking you questions. That's how I learn more and I would speak less. But because you're submitting such uh, brief questions and I don't have a lot of information and I can't ask you exactly to give me more details, I'm giving you guys generalized understandings of these things. So what it sounds like to me for the gentleman that submitted this question is that there's still uh, a resistance to fully surrendering back into you because your wife most likely doesn't fully trust you yet and she like many women don't want to get burned again they don't want to be made a fool of they don't want to open their heart up again and have it stomped on because you're not ready to live into the fullness of who you truly are like most of us when we're trying to get back our partner it's again as I shared earlier it's more desperation it's more neediness it's more like please mommy don't leave me it's more pleaser energy or, or yes man energy or turning her into mom. And she knows that if your words are powerful initially, she's going to test you. I want to know is this version, this new version of you that's emerging, is there going to be consistency to that? And she'll go by the past. 
She won't go by the present unless you stand in the present in a new powerful version of yourself that's encoded with a different energy, which is exactly what we teach in our brotherhood. How do, how do you become encoded with this so that you, you're, you're exuding this energy, right? You're giving it off so that your words do match the resonance of what your body's giving off. Just like, you know, somebody says, oh, I love you. Like, well, I couldn't feel that, right? Or I'm not angry. Or we'll tell that to, to the expressions on your face. So your energy has to match and that has to come through your growth. You can't fake your way there. So it sounds like she most likely doesn't fully trust you. And when a woman doesn't fully trust you, it's most likely because you haven't cleaned up past hurts and past betrayals. You haven't really retraced where it all originated, how far back it goes. And I tell stories about this all the time, like one of the brothers in our community where he had been with us for a year. He was like millimeters from divorced and when he came to a Man on Fire four day immersion, he was able to go home and resurrect and reignite the passion and the intimacy in his marriage. But a year later, we'd asked him, do you fully own her heart? And he's like, no, not yet. We're so much in a different place than when I first started my journey with Man on Fire, but I don't own every chamber of her heart yet. I said, well, here's what you have to do. I want you to discover what's the betrayal that you think you've cleaned up, but if you were to be honest with yourself, you would recognize there's more parts of that betrayal to clean up. So he realized there was a time before they got married where he was out to dinner with his soon-to-be wife and his parents. And his soon-to-be wife had sat on his lap. And his mom gave this disapproving look, like, why is she sitting on your lap? Like, well, are, you guys, are you guys children? And he caught that look from his mom and unconsciously asked his soon-to-be wife to get off of his lap. Well, she saw the whole thing that evolved. And she clearly got the message that mom comes first and mom's opinion of you is what matters and she saw you in that moment as a little boy and from that moment forward your marriage was encoded with I don't trust you. So he really got the magnitude of this and he went back after his four day immersion a year into our program and he, he reintroduced that conversation with her and he went all the way back into it and helped her feel that he got the emotional impact of what that must have done to her where it set the tone for their marriage, where she couldn't fully trust him, and that he gave off the impression that my mom's opinion of, of me matters more than my opinion of myself and what that must have felt like for her. And he really got with the impact and she started bringing tears and, and he was really penetrating the moment. And then he told her, if I could do it all over again, and then he went into how he would, how he would have handled it and he would have had her stay on his lap he would have pulled his mom to the side and he would have said, this is my soon-to-be wife. I need you to honor that. I need you to respect that. I don't really want to feel judgment from you, but if that's what you need to do, so be it. But it's not going to you know, change how I'm conducting myself. This is the woman I want to marry. This is the woman I love and I'm going to spend my life with. So he was able to convey this to his wife. And guess what? Now every chamber of her heart is owned by him in a beautiful and a glorious way. And this is what I'm hearing in this gentleman share is that there's still more betrayals to be cleaned up where she can feel that you truly get where you had dropped standard previously in the marriage and she could feel the congruence of who you're growing into where she can sense the safety knowing that you are going to maintain this new version of you. And how do you do that? Simple. You join a brotherhood of men that will hold you to the fire of your greatness because most of you are not going to get it done by yourself. And I don't say that to poke at you. It's just the truth. Like Men grow with challenge. Men will grow and rise with challenge from other men. Not talking, not sitting on a couch. I mean challenge physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. This is how we as men thrive and grow and rise. All right, let's move on to another question. This gentleman writes, I am so lost. My 12-year relationship may be coming to a close in two weeks because I can't find the tools to help me. I can't afford anything. I'll be left with my two children while she leaves to work on herself. My greatest fear is that I've lost her to a guy she's talking to and will be moving in with. But I trust she's telling the truth and them being just friends. How do I begin this journey? How do I get out of my head and start loving myself again? Such a beautiful... Uh, vulnerable share so thank you and it all starts again with your honest admission that you need help and as I shared in the very beginning of this video you have to have the hunger 
to want to change, like thinking the thoughts are not enough. You have to have the hunger, that insatiable appetite, that unquenchable thirst. And the hunger is going to lead to the emotional leverage to actually do something. Now, part of the problem with this gentleman where he shares that he doesn't have the money you know, to afford anything, what that really tells me, and this is no judgment, is that he's most likely been selling himself short in life. Like, how is it that we as men don't have money? Money is the easiest thing in the world to make. Well, a lot of us have some unconscious programming, some blockers or blockages, right? Distortional patterns that are keeping us from living in abundance, living with prosperity, living into the fullness of who we are, which is exactly why you have to surround yourself in a culture of other people that have what you don't have, that are resonating and operating at a frequency beyond yours, right? If you want to have a healthy, beautiful, vibrant marriage, that's why a lot of men join my community, because that's what I have with my wife. And, and guys get to see me with my wife when we speak on stage and they get to witness us and they get to feed into that and feed off of it and they see what's possible, right? Because I'm holding the resonance, I'm holding the field, I'm holding the vibration for what's possible for you as well. But maybe like myself in my earlier years, I couldn't create that in a marriage. I grew up in a tumultuous environment with a mother and father that argued and there was physical and emotional uh, abuse in the family. And so I didn't have any of that. So I just recreated what I grew up with. And many of you are probably in the same boat. And so I'm on the other side of that, thank God, now. And I've done the work and I've created a program that supports men with just this. So for this gentleman, you know, it's really important that you surround yourself with people that are going to remind you of how great you are, that are going to start to pull you up. And, and in the presence of those that are owning their light, you start to come back to your light. What I'm hearing implicit in a lot of your share is that uh, there's still a lot of codependency here. There's still a lot of, I don't feel good enough about myself. There's still a lot of unworthiness. And again, there's no judgment about that. I, I have massive respect for you. And I want to remind you, just like I want every guy to know, you'll always have feelings that you're never good enough. And at the same time, you could hold the mindset, of course you're enough. Of course you're enough. I mean, think about the competition you had to be created here on earth. Think about all the other sperms that you had to outswim to become you. You are the champion. You won the gold. You came in first place. Of course you're enough. You came from God's love. You came from God's heart. Of course you're enough. And while you're holding that remembrance because of where most of humanity resides, vibrationally, consciousness-wise, pulling us into this you know, field of I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, so many of us, we believe that. And we've lost our connection to source. We've lost our connection to soul. We've lost our connection to God, our creator, whoever that is for you. Right? Man on Fire is not about a specific religion. You know, the commonality in our brotherhood is love. It's mutual respect and love for one another, where we're uplifting each other to have more passion, power, and purpose in our life. So what it sounds like for this gentleman and for many of you that are most likely watching this is you've sold yourself short. And you've sold yourself short of the stand on the standard of who you came here to be as a man. And the truth is, like if that's the case, guys, you know, I wish it could be different, but the truth is you're supposed to be in pain. If you are living under the contract of who God made you to be and you are selling yourself short and you have lowered your standard, there has to be pain. And guess what? The pain is not something you're supposed to then run from and turn your back to and not confront. It's supposed to be your wake-up call. It's supposed to be your reminder, your remembrance, that tap from spirit, from soul, from your guides, from God, whoever it is. It's that reminder of wake up, wake up. You've been selling yourself short. It's time to wake up. But so many of you are trying to get away from feeling like you're not good enough. And now you come into the relationship or you're trying to save your marriage or bring it back to life. And it's coming from a place of codependency. It's coming from a place of neediness and and. I promise you, the woman that, that is on the other side, of this, that's not what she wants. She wants you to reclaim yourself. She wants you to find yourself again. Otherwise, you're just using her no different than a man uses video games or weed or massage parlors or porn or alcohol or gambling or cocaine or marijuana or overworking. It's just like she just becomes a form of pain management for you. A woman doesn't want to be that. She wants to be the love of your life. She wants you to emotionally penetrate her. She wants you to own yourself as a man, come back into that warrior and king energy of who God intended you to be. But so many of you have lost your way. This is why men join our program, 
to wake the hell up. Come home into the remembrance of who you truly are. And there's no crime, there's no shame in, in needing help and needing support. The best of the best, the best of the best have that. The best of the best have mentors, have masters helping them. The best of the best. So be vulnerable enough to reach your hand out and ask for support. That's what my community is all about. Men loving up on men, supporting them to rise with more passion, power, and purpose in their life. That's a beautiful thing. All right, let me move on to a couple other questions, and then we'll call it a, we'll call it a day. My wife and I have been separated for over a year. She says it's because I didn't support her emotionally through nursing school. I told her I did what I know how, and maybe I need to learn how to. She says it's too late to fix it. What can I do? I still love her with all my heart. So here's a classic example of everything that I've been sharing today. So I shared with you guys, you got to go back to the first betrayal and clean it up. She's telling this man straight up that he didn't support her emotionally through nursing school, right? Like we have guys in my community came to my four day immersion. They're in our inner chamber for a year long deep dive. And they'll share like story after story. Yep. Uh, after my wife um, had her miscarriage, I immediately uh, left the hospital and I ran back to work. Or, you know, since it was our second kid and I was there when the first kid was born, since it was our second kid, I just was there at the hospital. But as soon as the kid was born, I ran back to work. Why? Here's why. Number one, we as men lack presence. Very rarely can we just stay with what's in front of us and give it all of us. Number two, we have it wired in our head that we got to get back to work. Why? Because if we're not at work, things will fall apart. And if things fall apart, then the company falls apart or I lose my job or I lose the company and then we lose the money. And if I don't have the money, I can't provide and I can't protect my family. If I can't put food on the plate, if I can't put shelter over their head with a nice home, then I'm not a man. And if I'm not a man, I'm going to lose my wife. I'm going to lose my kids. I'm going to be all alone. And then what's the point of living? What's the point of living if I can't provide and protect my family? That's why. So a man thinks that a woman is supposed to understand that. No. What she understands is that in addition to you wanting to provide and protect her, what she needs, what she desires, what she yearns for, what she deserves is also for us to be present, to bring the fullness of our presence and to be able to bring, bring penetration. Right? I have a video out, the five Ps. Most of us are providers and protectors and we forgot. We have to learn how to be present and bring our presence, the fullness of who we are, to conversations. No distractions, just myself and my wife, or myself and my kids. Presence, the fullness. Can't be knocked off of the center of who I am. I'm solid, unwavering, imperturbable. And we have to know how to penetrate physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. So his wife is straight up telling him what the problem is. And here's what he's doing, what a lot of guys do, gaslighting her, trying to spin it around and tell her it's, 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 it's you, not me. Don't you understand? I'm working. Don't you understand? I'm, I'm doing what I can do to provide for the family. How do you expect me to support you during nursing school when I'm out there busting my butt so you can go to nursing school and so we can pay the bills and we can take care of the kids? Don't you understand? No, he doesn't, he doesn't understand. He's gaslighting her and making her think that she's wrong for feeling the way she's feeling. She's not saying that she's not grateful for how hard you work. What she's saying is that you don't know how to leave work at work. You don't know how to find a healthy balance. You don't know how to be present with me. You don't know how to penetrate the moment open. You don't know how to bring your full presence once you leave work. You go to the TV or the beer or the weed or the video games. You don't know how to just be present with me. That's what she's saying. This is a classic mistake that guys make. And it's not intentional. It's not like the gentleman that shared this is, is trying to you know intentionally sabotage the relationship. But straight up, he's clueless. As are many of us, as was me. Until you learn the language of a woman and you learn how to step into truly being a masculine man. Most of us were not taught this. I was not taught this. Most of you weren't taught this. And we can learn. That's the good news. We can learn. Just like you can learn how to play the game of baseball or football, you can learn how to be an authentic masculine man that embraces the fullness of his leadership and his true potential and rises with more passion, power, and purpose in his life. So this gentleman needs to clean stuff up with his wife. He needs to stop talking. He needs to listen with his heart, not his head. 
Listen with your heart, not your head. Stop steamrolling her. Stop interrupting her. Stop trying to be right. Stop taking things personally and start listening. Listen with compassion. Listen with your heart. That's what this gentleman needs. All right, let me see. We've got a couple more. Uh, I finally confronted the one person that I feared the most. By the way, by the way, anyone that, that's uh, tuned into this video, I mean, give me some comments below. Throw me some fire signs. Give me the big aha. Like, what's your takeaway? Are you guys with me right now? Or are, you, are you being zombies? Are you watching this? Are you getting value from this? Give me some feedback because I feed off of your feedback. I feed off of your energy. If I don't get comments, if I don't get fire signs, if I don't get likes, I'm out. I'm out. All right. Give it up. All right. So let's go to the next question. I finally confronted the one person that I feared the most, my mother. I've avoided her my entire adult life because I didn't like her as a person. She's very manipulating and wounded herself. I stood in the storm with her as a son should honor their mother. We've had hours of conversation over the past week. Mostly good stuff, but still draining. Today, I opened up to her about what, what I'm going through and how I feel. And for the first time in my life, she was very insightful. I've been feeling good up until this day, but now I'm so drained after expressing my feelings to her. How can I rebound quickly and fully so I can continue? And why did it drain me so much? All right, let's get to pieces of this uh, question. So number one, congratulations for confronting the one person that you had feared the most. And by the way, in the Man on Fire world, when we use the word confront, we don't mean being confrontational. We mean having the courage to face what you've been avoiding. And for many of you, there's so many cleanup conversations that you know you need to have, and you've been scared to confront them, to face them, to be with them, to take them head on. And so good for you, brother, to uh, grow the courage to do so. And that took courage and that took um, a lot of ownership and responsibility. And it shows that you're growing. And good for you to be able to stand in the storm, meaning when we talk about standing in the storm, what it really means, guys, is can you be in a conversation where Yes, you have boundaries, but you're not personalizing what the other person is sharing. You're not taking it on. You're not personalizing it. You're not taking it personally. You're just standing in the conviction of who you are, firmly rooted in the knowingness of who you are, steady and sturdy, unwavering, imperturbable, grounded in your power, connected to your heart, connected to your intuitive guidance, connected to source. Now, granted, that sounds so easy. I mean, but yeah, of course it takes work. And of course, Coming into a brotherhood like Man on Fire, we teach you how to do this. But why did this man feel drained is most likely he probably wasn't fully in his power. He probably was running all on mental energy. He probably wasn't fully rooted. He probably wasn't totally dialed into his power. Maybe he wasn't at times fully trusting his intuition. Maybe he wasn't feeling fully connected to his creator, to source. Maybe he was still in the energy of blame and shame and name and judge and project and he wasn't truly in his power where he could listen through empathy and through compassion and he can have a conversation and it's not to be right, it's just to be fully expressed and then you can hold space and presence for what the other person needs to share. And there's something that we teach in the Man on Fire world which is people don't trigger you, okay? Like, Oh, my mother, she she always pisses me off. Or, oh, my ex-wife. Or, oh, this guy that I work with. He always, I have such a charge with him. People don't trigger you. People trigger your triggers. What do you mean by that? The only reason you're having a reaction or you're feeling polarized or you're feeling a charge is because you have a charge. You're having a reaction because you own the charge. All people are are a little lighter or a matchstick. They're igniting what's already inside of you. They're nothing more than a catalyst to what you own, to what belongs to you. So what does that mean? It means that you have to learn how to diffuse your own charges. You have to learn how to diffuse your own polarities. You have to learn how to get with your own stuff so that you become free. You clear out your charges and your polarities so that when you are in a relationship with somebody else, 
you relate to them differently because you've cleared the space, right? You're putting energy into the space between you and another human being. And you're already, you're already predetermining how the conversation is going to play out based on the energy you're bringing into the conversation. So you think it's all about them. Oh, every time, oh, she always does this. Oh, he always does that. No, you always do it. You always keep bringing the same energy into the conversation, which then makes the outcome of the conversation 100% predictable. So the antidote is learn how to dissolve your own charges and your own polarities. That's what we teach the men in our brotherhood. We teach you how to get with your emotions that you've pushed down, that bound energy that just wants to be liberated in a healthy way. For some of you, it's just as simple as yelling into your arm, right? <clears throat> you just yell into your arm. Dissipate some of the tension. Dissipate some of the energy. Clear away the charge. And now, here I am. I'm in my heart. I'm not in my head. I'm not in the concept of who you are. I can relate to you in real time. My wife and I flew halfway across the world to India to learn this one thing. Well, two things. But one of them was people label other people. Oh, I don't, he's mean or she's uh, cold or he's fat. And we label people. And now we run into them a day later, a week later, a month later, a year later. We're not with them in real time. We can't relate to them. We've already labeled them. Most of you have labeled people in your family or labeled the people that you don't like. You labeled them. You have a word that describes who they are to you. And now you've lost your ability to relate to them, which means being with them in present moment without carrying how you label them from the past. So how could you get away from some of those labels? you got to discharge, get with the bound up energy, the bound emotions that you've pushed down that this person keeps trying to ignite for you. And you get with your charge and watch what happens. Now the space between you and this other person, the field, the shared energy between the two of you is different. And now you can relate to that person differently. Now what does that mean? It means you all of a sudden now have a different relationship with them, right? I remember back in 19, like 97, 98, this woman comes to my office in Manhattan and I was teaching her this, uh, this uh, breathing exercise that I'd learned from my, my teacher at the time, this wonderful man, Donald Epstein. And... Um, and he taught me this exercise called stage two, how you dissolve your charges and polarities. I taught this woman how to do it. She comes back to my office the next day and she says, what the hell did you do to me yesterday? I'm like, what's the matter? What's going on? She's like, I went home from your office and I hugged my doorman. I'm like, that's amazing. What's the problem with that? And she's like, I don't like him. Why the hell was I hugging him? And the answer is because she dissolved some of her charges in doing this exercise. And by having less of a charge, all of a sudden how she related to her doorman changed. All right. Give it up, guys. What are you hearing? Put it in the comments. Throw the likes. Throw the fire symbols. What are you truly hearing in what I'm sharing? What are you hearing? I have one more question that I'm going to address. But before I do, what are you hearing? Who's out there? How many of you are out there? Are you enjoying this content? What do you want to see more of? Put some comments in there. What do you want to see more of? Let me know. All right. Last one. Here we go. Are you ready? Here we go. I've been divorced for over a year now and separated a year prior. She and I have been getting along really well these last few weeks. She had been asking me for an apology since our split. On Sunday, I finally sat down and wrote my apology took me two years to own up to my own BS. I didn't blame her for anything. After reading back through it, I was crying like a baby, realizing how true and from my heart it was. She's been awfully cold to me since she's read it. It didn't do it for me. I wrote it for her. Is it possible that she's reliving my BS and is temporarily causing her to be mad again? Am I still stuck in my head worrying about what or how she's thinking? All right, beautiful question. So let me be very direct. I don't want to make assumptions here, but I have I obviously have a curiosity as to why you wrote her a letter or an email and why you didn't actually um, see her in person and own your apology, or at the very least see her on some sort of live video call, maybe FaceTime or a Zoom call, what is it that prevented you from having that level of intimacy where you could experience and witness each other's energy? So I'd be curious to have that answer. And it's very possible that that in and of itself 
made her feel like you're not really standing in your full masculine leadership. Why didn't you confront this head on where she could feel your heart? She was forced to read something where she's interpreting it through how she's hearing it, which is most likely based on a previous version of you, as opposed to feeling the congruence and coherence of your current energy. So you also have to recognize, and if you go all the way back to the beginning of this video, what I shared was that too often men will apologize to unburden themselves. Too often men apologize to help themselves feel better. Too often men will apologize where they're in their head, not in their heart. And what's required in a, in a man's apology is the genuineness behind it where you're apologizing because you want to take ownership and responsibility for how you've hurt your partner, how you've hurt your queen. And you have to show the willingness to be able to get with the emotional impact that it created for her. And you have to be willing to stand in the fire with her and hold space for her to have the emotions come up. And if she can feel your heartfelt presence and genuine and authenticness behind your apology, she will open to you. And your job there is not to then feel uh, unworthy and unlovable and then steal the show and make it all about you again. Your job is not to defend yourself and to gaslight her and to be in your head. Your job is to be in your heart, to be rooted in who you are, to own what belongs to you, to take responsibility what belongs to you, and to stand in the fire with her in that storm as long as it takes. You don't need an end point. You have to show your willingness to go all in with her. And you have to be unwavering and imperturbable and not personalize what she's sharing, but get the emotional impact of your actions or lack of actions and what it had on her and really allow her the privilege of expressing herself where she feels truly heard, felt, and seen by you. This is what's going to be required. So I don't have enough information to fully support this gentleman, but I do believe I gave you enough to really give you some leverage to having a deeper truth of how to handle this. All right, guys, so uh, give me some more comments below. Give some more likes. Throw me some fire signs since it's man on fire. Let me know what is a big takeaway that you got from today. For those of you that tuned in late, make sure you go back and watch the whole video. It was filled with uh, really a lot of gold nuggets, a lot of you know fire tips for you guys to start owning yourself as men, start getting back into the masculine leader that you were born to be, rising with more passion, power, and purpose, and coming home into the remembrance of who you are because you're the lighthouse. You are the lighthouse. Right? You were born for extraordinary, you were born for phenomenal, and you are coming home into that remembrance. I see you, I know who you are, I love you, and I look forward to serving you guys. For those of you that ever want to take a deeper dive with us, let us know you're truly ready to grow. Put it in the comments below. Someone from my community, my manager, community manager, Tiago, will reach out to you and he'll explore whether or not one of our coaching programs is right for you. For those of you that want to continue to follow a lot of my free videos, please do so. They're loaded with value. For those of you that know you need to take a deeper dive and you need more intimate support and you want to immerse yourself in the culture of our community and come join one of our coaching programs, let us know below that you're ready to grow. All right, guys, so much love, so much love, and I'll see you on next week's live. Bye for now, guys.